Hey guys, it's Micah and today I'll be telling you about the Spectrum Visualizer in Ableton Live. Spectrum performs real-time frequency analysis of incoming audio signals. The results are represented in a graph with decibel along the vertical axis and frequency slash pitch along the horizontal axis. The peak levels over here can be retained in the graph until the song is restarted. So it kind of stays there as you can see. Now Spectrum is not an audio effect, it's a measurement tool. It doesn't change your incoming signal in any way, there are no equalizers, nothing. But of course if you are EQing, it's a good idea to put a Spectrum before or after just to see the effects of your EQ if you're struggling to hear them. Now some quick tips, you can double click on this graphic display to enlarge it like this and you can change how big or small it is using these sliders. You can see my weird arrow and you can even move this out of the way by clicking on this triangle to make it even larger. And if you want it to go back down, you just double click or you can go in your title view, go to this little circle with a triangle and click on it and that also expands your view. Now let's go talk about our controls. On the left you have your block chooser and with this drop down menu you can select the number of samples that will be analyzed in each measurement. Higher values result in better accuracy but at the expense of CPU load. Compare that to this. You can see the peaks aren't as defined. Channel determines which channel is analyzed, left, right or both. So L and R is both and that's your default. Now if I go to this audio track, I've got an auto pan followed by a spectrum, just so I can demonstrate this to you. Now if I only go to my left channel, you can see there's audio, no audio, as the audio goes to the right channel. Then we've got refresh, and this refresh slider determines how often spectrum should perform an analysis. A more accurate display will also be more CPU intensive. So a faster response time, a lower millisecond value, will give you a more accurate display. You can see it actually has a substantial lag. Then your average slider over here allows you to specify how many blocks of samples will be averaged for each update of the display. With a setting of one, each block is shown. This will result in more activity in the display and it's useful for finding the spectrum of short peaks, but as you increase the average value, the display updates more smoothly, providing more of an average spectrum over time, and this is more consistent with the way we actually hear. Average one, you're increasing it. Now you can see the peaks aren't as high because they're averaging out everything for the display. Then this graph button down here switches between displaying the spectrum as a single interpolated line, which is your line, or if you click on it, it'll show discrete frequency bins. So with bins you've got these individual lines and under line the display is one continuous line. You can also toggle max on or off. Max toggles the display of the accumulated maximum amplitude. With max enabled you can reset the maximum amplitude by clicking in the display. So this refers to those lines. See this line over here? These are all my maximum amplitudes for all the different frequencies and it kind of stays when max is enabled until I either reset the audio or click on it. But with max off, you won't have that line at all. Now with max on, I can keep clicking and it'll reset this max line display. Alright, let's go to scale. Now scale refers to these numbers on the side here. You can choose between lin, log and st which is semitone. I'm in lin mode now, if I change to log, the scaling has changed. And now if I change to semitone, it's actually exactly the same as log, except instead of looking at your pitch in terms of hertz, you're looking at it in terms of named pitches like C2, C3. Also, as you move across spectrum, you may have noticed this box on the bottom left. This box shows the amplitude, the frequency, and the note name at my cursor's position. So as I move it up, the frequency goes up, or if I go down, it's the lower decibels. So that's also nice if you want to know exactly what this peak over here was. In fact, to be more accurate, double click on it, and then go to that specific peak that you're after, and then you can get the details on that. 
And then you've got some more scaling controls. You can choose between auto or range. Under range, you can actually change the range that you see in your graph by clicking and dragging on these sliders, or you can click and drag on your display. Clicking and dragging up or down actually just moves the display up and down, as you can see. And if you're moving it horizontally, so to the right or to the left, you're zooming in. So if you want to zoom in between a very narrow range, say between 0 and minus 6 dB, then range is a great way to do it. But under auto, Spectrum will automatically scale the display so that all your audio fits in. So when I play my next audio, you'll see how it rescales to fit the audio display in. There we go. And that's it for the Spectrum. As I mentioned, Spectrum is great used in conjunction with an EQ, but also for ear training. I do mention ear training a few times in my videos, and it's an absolutely indispensable skill if you're in the music industry. I'm doing a video like this for all the audio effects in the Ableton Live Manual. In fact, everything in the Ableton Live Manual. So if there's anything you want to learn, you can just check out these playlists. And I will see you soon in the next one.